I said, what do you think of this uh, switching to this tool? And he's, and he said, I am totally f***ing opposed to it. And so <laughs> I love that. I don't know if I would have loved that when I was younger, if I would have got that, what that it means. That means he's serious. I'm serious about my business. How are y'all doing? I'm sitting here and I was drinking my coffee and it's it kind of hard to get it over the harmonica, but I finished it up and I thought I'd play you a song and uh, tell you a little story. A little, this is not so much a story, but uh, talk about some advice that I give to young musicians about things that matter, that I think matter. And to them, I'm sure I just sound like their dad or something. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like kind of like that when I'm lecturing these young musicians. But I want to talk about that. And there's two things that I, I'm very strong about. When I, when I meet a young musician, and some of you watching might know, might be one of those young musicians I've talked to, uh, there's two things that I just think are real important, and I harp on them. And uh, so I'm going to talk about those two things. The first one is sharing your music. Now, when I was young, uh, things were very different. You could not, I've got a recording studio sitting next to me here. That, that was unheard of. You might have had a tape deck or something. Um, I can pull up a drummer to play with me. There's all kinds of things. I can go learn bass for a song I'm recording. And so when I was young, it was kind of strange if you were a musician that was good, that loved music, yet you weren't playing with anybody else. I, th I can only think of one person that I knew like that back then. Most everybody that played music, that was in love with music, I kind of differentiate people that are just kind of fooling around and seeing if that's their thing with people that are just in love. They wake up, they play their guitar all night, they, they, they're always watching stuff about it. That's They're in love with music. <clears throat> that was kind of... It would be very strange in my day and age to be alone creating, even if you were a songwriter. You'd always want to bring a bass player in or a drummer or another songwriter or a recording engineer or something, someone creative to help you. Nowadays, it almost feels like an epidemic that's going on with musicians. And maybe it's good, maybe it's bad, maybe I don't know. But when I look at it, in my own experiences of creating alone, I think it's not good. I don't think it's good for us to be alone. Uh, and so my first piece of advice, and this, this can go further than music. This can go into all kinds of creative endeavors. I've, this same advice works for me in business and all kinds of things, but are things that I've learned. But the advice I give to these young musicians is start playing with somebody, anybody. You know, if you're a guitar player, find a songwriter. If you're a songwriter, find a drummer. Find a someone to, yeah, you can record, but find somebody that's just in love with recording that can do that. And the reason it's not so much music career advice or anything like that. It is life advice. It's spiritual advice. It's things that I've learned in my life that, uh, that I, I just feel like these young kids are missing or they might miss if they don't open up. And it's hard to do that. It's hard because music and really anything that's serious to us, that is creative, is somehow intertwined with our ego and our feelings and our heart and our spirit. And so when we let people in there and they start pulling on little strings and stuff, it hurts or it's awkward and it's not comfortable. I'm not telling you that it will be comfortable. In fact, you might, you know, break up with, you know, three bands before you find one musician that, that, that is that other person in your life. But the reason I say that is, is, is less about the music and more about what your life in music is going to be like if you continue to just make music by yourself. Um, to me, sharing my music is all the, the joy of music. The, the actual creations, like the recordings of music, and even the shows that I remember, they, they occupy just a tiny little part of my heart. I mean, it's so small that I go, oh yeah, that was a cool song. That's about my reaction to hearing an old song of mine. Now, it's completely different with the people 
that created these songs with me that I worked with, whether it's a recording engineer, creative people that were just around. I mean, even all the way to video people and everything, anybody creative that was in my space creating with me, those are my memories, not the music. The music gives very, very little to me now. And, and it also, it drives me forward. There's been times, if you're going into music, part of the thing is, is when I see a, a young person in love with music, like I was, it hurts me. Because <laughs> it's hard. It's a hard road ahead. Because it, it's emotionally hard. And it's especially hard, and maybe more so in this, you know, society where we have so many ways to share our music. But... What you want is to be able to keep doing that. And what, it, what hurts me is, is I can see many people in my life that music gets lost and it drops off because it just can't hold its place against the other purposes in your life unless it's a serious purpose. And so I think for life itself, you have to have a purpose that's serious. It has to be consequential. It has to feel like I've got to do this thing. And you know, I definitely make music alone quite a bit. Sometimes I have errors when I need to be alone and, and find myself in music. But that's a means to an end of, of getting back and working with other people. And the thing is, is that can't keep driving me. It's not big enough. The passion in that of me creating music alone is not big enough to drive me year after year after year after decade after decade after decade to keep that same energy, that same joy of waking up and being excited to make music. What does drive me, though, is the other musicians in my life. Can't wait to show so-and-so. Can't wait for so-and-so to be jealous of this or whatever. You know, there's, there's these little contexts that, that are a part of my music creation, and it's other people. There's little carrots in front of me, and it's other people. And... Uh, you know, sometimes, even in my own career, there's been times where I made an album solely, for no other reason, went through great expense and, and awkward times and arguments and all kinds of things to uh, make an album that I didn't need to make, but I made it for the musicians so we could get together and have a, a project that we could get serious about. And I'll say one last thing about that. It's just about the, the awkwardness of it, the arguments in music, they're all a part of it. They have to be there. You have, if you're with musicians that, you know, never have an opinion or disagree or it ever, ever, ever gets heated at all, well, you're probably with musicians that just don't care enough. They don't take seriously the music you're doing and the music, the song, because it's got to be bigger than us. When musicians get together, it's about the thing you're making, it's about the thing you're going to go share much more than individual people. So if you don't care about that, and if you're not with people that care about it, there's not gonna be any of that awkwardness or arguing or tense moments or breakups because nobody cares. And so you're not, you're gonna create something nobody cares about, you know? Um, and I think of like how this is kind of related to just like real life and real other creative endeavors is I'm beyond my career in coffee and song. <laughs> I have a career, I have a business, a marketing business that I, I run with my son. And just yesterday, I think, I called him, and I was thinking of this new tool that we could switch over. And I called him and said, what do you think of this, us switching to this tool? And, he's, and he said, I am totally f***ing opposed to it. And so <laughs> I love that. I don't know if I would have loved that when I was younger, if I would have got that, what that it means. That means he's serious. I'm serious about my business. I care about the tools that I use in my business. I, I think about them. It keeps me up at night. And to know that I'm working with somebody that cares too enough to get uncomfortable to even argue with me about it means the world to me. And so that's what you're missing if you're not working with other people is you're missing this growth that's going to come. It's going to change you. It's going to it's going to help you grow up. It's going to help you, your music expand into areas you never thought were possible. And not just music. This could be in all kinds of ways. You know, even things as, as uh, solo as writing a novel. I, I've written a few novels. Let's not ever talk about them. But when I was doing that, I started going to writer's groups with my dad. And so the novels are not special to me. That's special to me. My children, I wrote the novels for my children. Reading those to my children are special to me. So the other thing that leads me to the other thing, so sharing your music, 
with other musicians, other creatives is one thing. And the second thing is giving your music away. In fact, this is the soul, this should be like the soul drive. You know, you get together to share with each other and work with each other so that you can give this to somebody or many people. And I think of it like as a gift that's given to me and it's wrapped all beautifully. And if I sit here in my studio and I don't turn on that phone or I don't go play a concert or I don't uh, go do something with my music, then I'm just unwrapping that package myself and I open it and it's empty. <laughs> it's just an empty box. It was so beautifully wrapped. It's empty to me because I was just meant to take this gift and give it to somebody else. Music is a gift, not for you, but to give to somebody else. And so I would say even, you know, and I tell these young people, don't be too discriminant about where you play. You know, this isn't particularly music career advice. I'm not really the best person for that. But more, once again, just life advice about music, the relationship of music in your life, throughout your life, till the very end. Then don't be too worried about where you're giving that. If there's one person there or a thousand, don't let that matter to you. Uh, I've played, I've, you know, I'm not a big wig musician. You, most people listening to this don't even know who I am. That's fine. But I've played for 30 years and I've played, you know, South by Southwest showcases, uh, folk festival showcases, played for hundreds and a thousand people just to see me or my band. And I got to tell you, those, those shows are not what pop up when I, when I sit with my coffee and I think about the old days. I think of just some very small shows. And one of them, the most special show I've ever done was for one person, maybe two persons, two people. And I'll tell you a little bit about that is that show was for my aunt or it's our, my wife's side on my wife's side was in her last days. And her dad was a honky tonker. She has, we have a picture of her, her dad on our wall with a banjo. And so I thought, you know, we're going to go say farewell to her and I'm going to take my guitar and play her some music. And so I took Cozy and we ended up playing a concert there in the nursing home in her room. And I say two people because her, her roommate really enjoyed the concert too. And this is also where things, you know, where I talk about it, your purpose Music has to become serious. It has to be serious to carry you through. You gotta find ways for it to become serious if you wanna keep it throughout your life. And you're not gonna find those alone just making it. It has other people make it serious. And so even giving it away, I remember my aunt and the roommate getting a little spat and my aunt telling the roommate, cause she was getting all excited and asking me questions and everything and requesting songs. And my aunt said, he's not here for you, he's here for me. <laughs> and even that, so during that concert, my audience, my aunt, was taking this very serious. That means everything to me because I take it very serious too. And so when you give, you know, your music, it, it becomes serious. Even if nobody's listening to it, it was serious that you got up on that stage by yourself or with a band and you gave. That's serious. That makes it more serious to you. You know, and, and I would, that's why I say, think of it as something that you got to give away and, and let that drive you. I think the internet's not the best way to do it. I think you'd be better off standing on a street corner busking and giving it away that way to actual, and you are actual people, don't, don't take this wrong, but face, actual face-to-face -face contact. Be rejected face-to-face. -face. Let someone enjoy it face-to-face. -face. This is the stuff we're, we're losing now. Now I'm going to play this song, and this song, I kind of went on today. Some of these are a little bit longer than others, I will. But uh, this is a new song I wrote, and it was actually uh, inspired. A musician came over to my studio here, and I, I, I've never played music with this guy, and he came over, and I had just been working and working on music and like figuring out equipment and everything, and we, were, we got to go on, on some songs and experiments of sounds and, and ideas. And I went out and sat by the fire and my studio wall is real thin. I could hear him in here just wrestling with a part. And it just, it just felt like when I was young, what music felt like to me. And I forgot that music, you know, isn't just work. 
It's something beautiful. It's meant to be shared. We're supposed to be together and, and struggle. And I, you know, and also that he took, the, you know, he's working on a song of mine, but he was taking it deadly serious of figuring out this idea. And we came in and we just worked and it was beautiful. And it, it actually just brought me back. And I don't want to tear up to my first band, Gypsy Tree. And, and just how beautiful that was of us sharing this thing. And then what we were creating just in a room together, we were like, we got to go give this away. We have to. We can't just do this. And, and that's what we did. And, and uh, this is what this song's about. <laughs> Y'all have a blessed day.